is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are We are Ohio. It is an absolutely marvelous weather day for baseball. We welcome you to Miller Park in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The final game of this trip for New York and Milwaukee, and the Reds are hoping this final day of it will mean their first win on this trip. And hi again, everybody, alongside Chris Welch and Jim Day. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Now, a five-game losing streak a season worst for the Reds but if there is some light at the end of that tunnel Chris you look over the last couple of years which have been very good years for the Reds when they've had five game losing streaks in three of the cases look what they did immediately thereafter well it's typical of a lot of baseball clubs you get hot you get cold you get cold and then you hope you get very very hot and you can see what happened in 2013 the Reds three times lost five games, and they came out of each of those, except for the very last one at the end of the year, came out winning and winning a lot. So you just hope that this five-game losing streak spawns some kind of a little hot streak that the Reds can get going. No better day to start it than today with Mike Leak on the mound. Well, let's talk about Leak. He went on Friday night in the first game after the break against the Yankees, wound up seven innings and four runs, but he seems to be lately a little bit not quite as sharp as early in the year. You know, Mike Leak, you don't really give him sometimes the credit for be needing a lot of reps and needing some snap on his pitches because he's more or less a control pitcher. But what's happened to Mike Leak so far this year is the left-handers have really hit him for the long ball. They've done the most damage on him. He's got to figure out a way to finish his pitches to left-handers especially and don't make mistakes out over the plate with that cut fastball. And uh, Mike Leak is a guy that is now over 130 innings, and you hope that he's able to find some snap in his pitches. The guy who has handled left-handers is Kyle Loesch. His changeup has been outstanding to left-handed pitchers. The hitters overall, he's 10-4. and four. He's the guy that the Brewers are sending out there in hopes of a sweep today. And Mike Leak is the only guy that stands in their way. All right, we'll see if Leak and the Red Legs can get this win today before they get a day off tomorrow and then open a six-game homestand Friday night. Boy, these have been tough losses. Really tough. Jim Day has that story when we return.
Cincinnati Reds Baseball on Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further. By Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. Wrapping up a three-game series in Milwaukee and a six-game road trip. I'm Jim Day on the field. Last night, no question about it, another tough one as the Brewers walked off in the victory, their second straight against Cincinnati. Now, the toughest runs, the ones that are losses that take the wind out of your sails are when you blow a big, big lead and you lose the game. But a close second are walk-off victories. And unfortunately, the Reds have endured seven walk-off losses this season. That is second most in the National League, including last night when Jonathan Lucroy hit his second home run of the game. Tough way to lose all the way around. And one-run games, well, it's been the staple this year for Cincinnati. They're 16-21 in one-run games this season. That's fourth most games in the ma in all of Major League Baseball. And it's been a roller coaster ride. They started the season 3-9 and nine in one-run games, then went 10-5, and five, now back to 3-7. and seven. It doesn't matter if it's one run, two runs, three or more. They will take a win however they can get it today. The Milwaukee Brewers have that broom closet and that's cracked open a little bit. The Reds hoping to slam that bad boy shut. Mike Luke goes to the hill for the Reds when we come back. by authority of the Cincinnati Reds and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Temperatures right at 70 degrees here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A sun splashed Wednesday afternoon. And the Reds and the Brewers wrapping up this three-game series. Milwaukee has taken the field. Let's take a look at Brian Price's starting lineup today, presented by Meyer. Hamilton, Frazier over at third, Brian Pena in the number three spot. Ryan Ludwig in left. You see the numbers career wise for Jay Bruce against Kyle Loesch, Devin Mezzarocco catching, and a latter third of Skip Schumacher, Ramon Santiago, and Mike Leak. Kyle Loesch, for a couple of years in 2006 2007, wore a red uniform, but after he went to St. Louis, Chris. His career has taken off. Yeah, he won nine games for the Reds and he lost 17. But when he went to St. Louis and got under the tutelage of Dave Duncan, who convinced Kyle Loesch to essentially get rid of that four seam fastball, embrace the two seamer, get more ground balls, pitch down in the zone, 
and he has really carved himself out a very nice major league career. 35 years old now. This is start number 384 in his major league career. First pitch of the game to Billy Hamilton is strike one. And we are underway. Hamilton, a 280 batter, six home runs and 39 runs batted in. The Reds, two games over 500, 51 up, 49 down. It's a ball and a strike on Hamilton. They lost games in the standings to the Brewers each of the first two games. So they've gone from two and a half back to four and a half back. And the Brewers all of a sudden after being tied with the Cardinals going into play on Monday now have a game and a half lead over St. Louis. Cardinals have lost two in a row. They lost Sunday night to the Dodgers. They were off on Monday and they lost the opening game of a two game series against Tampa Bay last night. Hamilton fouls it out of play. The Pirates are sandwiched in between the Cardinals and the Reds. They beat the Dodgers last night. So you've got St. Louis a game and a half back. The Pirates two and a half. The Reds four and a half. And a lot of baseball to go in 2014. And a fly ball into left center. That's an easy play for Gomez. And Hamilton set down to begin the Reds first inning. We look at Milwaukee defensively presented by your four dealers. They had the injury last night to the second baseman Scooter Jeanette. Ricky Weeks replaced him in the game and replaces him in the lineup today. Reynolds back at first in place of Lyle Overbay. Now Todd Frazier in that number two spot. Boy, so many of these Reds, and especially the big guys, the guys you're really, really counting on with so many injuries to Brandon Phillips and Joey Votto, but you have Jay Bruce who has one hit during the entire road trip. Frazier only has three hits. One of them that game tying solo home run in Yankee Stadium on Sunday, but that's been it as far as run production is concerned. Hamilton, four hits and 20 at bats. And Mezzarocco only one hit on this road trip. So when you're leaning on backups in a lot of other spots, left field, Today with Santiago again in the lineup. Schumacher was the guy they brought in to play off the bench. He's playing regularly. The guys that are your regular guys, you're counting on them more than ever. Well, the key, of course, of your regular guy is just continue to be a regular guy and not try to be a superstar and carry the ball club on your own. Although each of these guys that we've talked about, Todd Frazier, Devin Mezzarocco, and Jay Bruce are capable of really getting on a tear and carrying a ball club. But right now, none of those three are really swinging the bat all that well. And you got to keep plugging away and hope that they can swing their way out of it. Yep. Two and two to Frazier. And a foul ball back to the screen. You know, what we've noticed about Todd is that even with the home run that he hit off Patances the other day, which was a terrific at bat. He's beginning to chase a little bit more off this off the plate, maybe trying to do too much, realizing he's in a little bit of a funk and trying to hit your way out. Sometimes you expand the strike zone is what the pitcher wants you to do. to the count on Frazier and Lowe's delivers a foul ball out of play and we'll do it once again. Well the numbers are just amazing. When you look at where Kyle Loesch was when he first came to the major leagues high draft pick by the Minnesota Twins was there for six years the Reds about a year and a half they traded him to Philadelphia then he went to St. Louis and did not get off to a particularly good start there. But my oh my, starting in 2011, he has made 115 starts. He has won 51 games while losing only 25. And that winning percentage of 671 ranks fifth in all of Major League Baseball.
And you really wonder how a guy does this because since he broke into the league, you know, he came in in 2001. They started tracking average velocity and so on somewhere around 2006, 2007. But even since 2007, he's lost at least two miles an hour on his fastball. But he's a much, much better pitcher now than he was then. And it's all about doing what he did to Todd Frazier, changing speed and staying off the corners. That was an 11 pitch at bat by Frazier. A uh, strikeout for Kyle. Those two up, two down here at the top of the first. Yeah, finally threw a slider out there. Maybe that was a change. Actually, it was a change up. He throws about every different pitch there is. Two different kinds of fastballs, a slider, curveball, changeup. Does not throw all that many to right handers. Changeups, that is, but. After 10 pitches, I guess you're you're going to throw anything up there hoping to get it out. Now Brian Pena takes a fastball high and tight. Pena batting in that number three hole. I'm not even sure he would have believed it. But he signed as a contract, a two-year two deal as an offseason pickup by the Reds, that he would be batting at any point in time, third in their lineup. But he has five hits and 15 at-bats on this road trip. Had two home runs in the first game after the All-Star break on Friday night at Yankee Stadium. Well, he hit the ball very, very hard all four times last night. Wound up with two hits. Could have easily had four. And you can tell the guy was in a good place. Pitches like that right there. I mean, made no offering at the pitch and was able to pick it up very early after leaving Loesch's right hand. It's a good point. I always used to be able to tell who's hot and who's cold by how they take a pitch. And there's another line drive and another out. So one, two, three, go the Reds. And Mike Leak will take the mound trying to answer Loesch in the bottom of the first inning. Winning the first two games of this series in his lineup tonight presented by Miles. As Gomez in center, Lou Croy. A couple of home runs, including the game winner behind the plate, Ryan Braun and right. Ramos Ramirez, Ricky Weeks, and Chris Davis in the middle. Mark Reynolds, Gene Segura, Kyle Loesch, a ladder third against seven and eight right-hander Mike Leake. Well, Mike Leake has faced the Brewers a couple of times already this year. Once he's pitched very well and received a loss. The other, he's pitched rather mediocre and got a win. The difference was the Reds outpouring of offense in one of the games in which he pitched really pitched five innings he gave up four runs lead off man a boy if there is such a thing as a defensive slump 
It's the first time all year the Reds are in one. Well, it seems like the Reds are slumping really in almost every category there is. We've talked about the slumping offense. There's a defensive slump, as you refer to. I don't think they've run the bases well at all, especially on this road trip in, in tight ball games. And I think the starting pitching for the first time ever has shown, you know, a couple of nicks and bruises. So it's kind of a team-wide malaise right now that they find themselves in. And they're always looking for the game to get it out of them. You know, Brian Price was asked a question last night about, you know, is there any silver lining? And he said, no, no silver lining. He said, let's forget about it. He said we gave up four home runs. We lost four to three. We haven't played terribly well coming out of the break, and there's not a lot other to say than that. He said we have not done enough to go out there and win. It's time to step it up. And Price was certainly critical about the pitching. He says we're just not doing it. He said, we haven't had a quality start, in my opinion. He said, quality starts for some might be six innings. He said, quality starts are seven and on for me. Well, he set the bar of expectation for this starting staff very high. But he's right. He realizes that the offense that he's running out there on a daily basis is not geared to score a bunch of runs. So they've got to continue Ooh. to depend on good pitching. And, of course, that goes along with good defense. One and two on Lucroy. After the air, now a base hit, and here come the Brewers in the opening inning. Now, uh, Jonathan Lucroy went from becoming very, very cold in the beginning of this series, the first couple of games, until his last two at bats last night. Both of those were home runs, including the walk off, and now three hits in a row for Lucroy as he punches this one through the five and a half hole on the left side of the infield. Two on, nobody out for Ryan Braun. Some of you may be wondering, you know, about the look of the field right now, and it's a legitimate question. It is hard to imagine a more perfect summer day than we have here today in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But they have half of the roof closed. And apparently there are some that play for this Brewers team that don't like to have to deal with the shadows, whether they be as a batter or a defender. And so three quarters of this field engulfed in shade rather than bright sunshine. So you're saying it's a player decision. That's what I understand. As in player singular or players, a group of players have gotten together and petitioned to have the roof only partially open. I didn't get that far, but I know one thing. They wouldn't be the first player or players All right, so that would have an influence on management's decision to open or close a roof. All right, well, let me ask you something, Tom Brenneman. Would you call the way that they have this roof today, would you call that half open or half closed? Oh, I would definitely call it half open. Yeah, I knew you would say that. I like that sunshine. Yeah. Now, but not half the field is in sunshine. That's true. I'll tell you about a third of the field. One and two to Braun, two on and nobody out here in the Brewers opening inning. And a bluff throw sending Gomez back to second base. Well, that's a good idea by league. I'm not really sure about Mike's problem this year with holding runners on he's never had it before but this year he has given up 11 stolen bases and have had no catchers caught stealing so sometimes it seems like he maybe he's not paying quite enough attention to runners on base
Gomez and Lou Croy aboard with none out. One and two to Ryan Braun. And a sweeping breaking ball stays too low. Chris Siegel calling the balls and strikes. Tony Randazzo over at first. David Rackley, the umpire at second base, and the crew chief is working at third today, Brian Gorman. It's a big pitch here in this at bat. Two and two on Ryan Braun and leak to the plate. Strike three call. And again, Braun complaining to the umpires he did in the game last night when he was called out on strikes in the eighth inning against Jonathan Broxton. Uh, that's a cut fastball that Ryan Braun fully expected to run in towards him. Instead, it stayed either right on line or came back towards the plate a little bit. I think Homer Bailey did that to him in his first at bat last night. Make it the that wasn't it definitely wasn't the first at bat. I think it was Broxton that got him on that pitch mm -hmm. later in the ball game. Yep. He was unhappy about two of the strikes called in that at bat. Mm -hmm. So the first out recorded by Leak after an error by Frazier and a single allowing Gomez to advance on a second. And it should be a double play ball. Off the bottom of Ramirez, and it is. So Leak pitches around the end. A hit and air and a man left, and the one no score. for a chance to win 5.6 million dollars for the MLB.com's easy and free game beat the streak pick players to get hits in 57 straight games it's fun play MLB.com beat the streak today I had a streak come to an end yesterday well you can start a new streak right? yeah, you, you, yeah. I already have uh, chosen another player for games tonight because once games start like if you're thinking about jumping on right now you can't pick a player for this game because the game's already started even if that player doesn't have any bat mm -hmm. like Ryan Love but I've been riding that Miguel Cabrera train here lately. yeah well he kept it going but you're allowed to double down and I doubled down I went with D Gordon last night how'd that work out not good okay I tell you what did work out well though there's a tapper down the third <laughs> <laughs> That really worked out well. That did not go well for Ramos Ramirez. I mean, he wasn't even near that first base target over there in Mark Reynolds. It's like he was aiming elsewhere. Must be something at third base early today. Oh, it just must have slipped right out of his hand.
So let's see if the Reds can take advantage of that throwing error by Aramis Ramirez. As Jay Bruce is a batter. But what did go well was our head-to-head -head game. Went well for you. It's now two out of three, big boy. Well, you better find a way to right the ship. You know, it's amazing because I know you reluctantly picked the opposition. You always like to pick the I Reds. picked one player. You picked one player yesterday and he had a pretty good day. Yeah, he did. Including a walk-off home run, yeah, which man. gets you a lot of points. Yeah, but it also bumps me out. So you went with all Reds today? I did. I have all Reds today. And I believe I got to double check it because you start playing this game and you get wrapped up on guys you keep and maybe guys you have the day before. I think. Let's take a look. I think I have Jay Bruce today. I do. Play the head-to-head -head game. It's not only what they do at the plate; it's what they do in the field. Really? I didn't yeah, know that. yeah. I, I didn't realize that either. Now that's that changeup that Carlos really likes to to tease those left-handers with. And if he gets you looking for a fastball at all, and sometimes he'll cut the ball in on you, then go away with like. Little change up like that. Great arm action by Lotion. Also, great location. So the runner still stays at second base. There's one out in the inning, and here's Devin Mezzarocco. And Devin quickly behind strike one. Oh, I see. So by Frazier, who you have taught Frazier today. See, I think I don't think it's defense. I think what it is is they penalize you for strikeouts. I think that's where you lose points. Rather than on defense. Hmm. When a player strikes out. Well, this is a routine fly ball in the center, so neither Bruce nor Mezzarocco. After the Reds had a runner at second, but nobody out to begin the inning. At the very minimum. He's not been advanced, and there are two away after a strikeout and a fly ball. You know, especially when you're given a gift opportunity and you get an extra out in an inning. I mean, otherwise, this inning would have gone one, two, three had Aramis Ramirez made a reasonable, good throw to first base. But you get a runner at second base, nobody out. You're in a team slump. You're looking for a little something to jumpstart you, and you're just unable to even get the guy to third. Now it's up to Skip Schumacher. 248 batter with a home run and 15 runs batted in. Ludwig out there with a good lead. And the fastball's right down the middle of the strike to Schumacher. Here's a high pop up into right field. And Weeks will be called off by Braun. And the Reds go down one, two, three after an error put Ludwig at second base to begin the inning. No score and no walk.
Fangraphs analyzes why Todd Frazier is much improved this year. See what Mike Brown had to say about the Bengals' belief in Andy Dalton. And a sweet surprise LeBron James used to apologize to his neighbors. It's good stuff. 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. Drive safe. Spend less. There's a very nice article written, and Chris, you and I were talking about this today. Just following that thought and some of the comments made by Mike Brown yesterday. There's a ground ball to short, one away in the end. And of course, we're a ways off in football season. But from a national perspective, uh, I think Mike Brown opened a lot of eyes talking about how he's really stepped away from so much of the the day-to-day -day running of the operation, especially on the football side, and that his daughter is getting rave reviews from some around the NFL. Katie Brown Blackburn and the job that she is doing what has a lot to do with that. It's an interesting article. Let's hope that bears out on wins on the field. Well, they've been in the playoffs three years in a row. That ain't bad. You're Four right. Out of five. That ain't bad at all. He's got to win that playoff game. There's a smash diving play by Santiago. Long, strong throw, and he got him. What a play by Ramon Santiago. Not only the dive in short left field on the outfield grass, but springing to his feet and the throw in time. Good stretch by Pena. Really good play by Pena at the other end. I mean, lickety split. He gets up, throws it on the bounce, but that's a good pick and a long stretch by Pena. Look at him. He ends up on his belly. Should bring a smile to Mike Leake's face. Well, that's three consecutive ground balls right to Ramon Santiago. <laughs> Swinging a foul ball out of play by the first baseman, Mark Reynolds. Center field on an 0 2 pitch. Take a look at the Reds on defense presented by your four dealers. One with Hamilton, Bruce, left center and right. Santiago Schumacher up the middle. Frazier and Peña on the corners. And Mesoraco back in the lineup. Inside some of the, the numbers, especially the power numbers against Lake this year. He's among the leaders in Major League Baseball of giving up hits and home runs with two strikes in and at bat. And that was an 0 2 pitch here by Reynolds. Yeah, the 0 2 pitch is the one that kind of is perplexing. I'm not say troubling, but perplexing. He's given up three home runs this year on an 0 2 count. And five runs batted in overall. If you compare that to what Kyle Loesch has done this year, Loesch has given up five hits, but he's only given up one run batted in all year long. An 080 batting average, 0 and 2. And that's what we're talking about. This is on an 0 2 count. Now, 212 is a batting average. It's a little bit higher than the league average. I think the league bats about 180 or so. On an 0-2 count. That's when you make an out on an 0-2 count or put the ball in play. On a 2-1 count, it'll take care of Segura. That will let me in it. We play two and we are scoreless in the one.
you by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-OAK-OHIO. MLB news and notes from around baseball yesterday. Chase Headley, acquired by the Yankees, had the walk-off game-winning single in the 14th. Derek Jeter, how about that? Passing Lou Gehrig, the Yankees' all-time doubles leader. Tim Lincecum come in at extra inning marathon, getting a save last night. And bad news for Colorado. I mean, it goes from bad to worse. Not only are the Rockies in dead last in the West, now they lose their best play. They have lost seven consecutive games. Ramon Santiago, and that one pulled foul and ball and two strikes. Colorado will be playing later this afternoon against the Washington Nationals. Steven Strasburg on the mound in that one, and the Nationals, like the Reds, will be flying into Cincinnati tonight. And both will enjoy off days tomorrow. Before the series opener at Great American Ballpark Friday night. One out on the fly ball to left field. The Reds beat the Washington Nationals two out of three earlier this season. Both teams were really beat up from a health standpoint. Pitching matchups over the weekend. The Reds will have Alfredo Simon, Johnny Cueto, and Matt Latos. The Nationals will go with Tanner Rourke, Gio Gonzalez, and Doug Fister. That is a good starting rotation for the Washington Nationals. Oh, and one to Mike Leak. And now 0 oh and 2 to Mike Leak. Weeks will handle a slow roll. Two gone. As always, coming up later on, we'll have our Miller time moment. Brought to you by Miller Light. Billy Hamilton taking a little extra time to get in that batter's box, allowing Mike Leake to get back into the dugout. Hamilton flying out to center field, leading off the game. No score. We're in the top of the third inning. Two outs and nobody on. The Reds without a hit the first time through the batting order. Their only base runner was Ryan Ludwig, reaching on an error by Aramis Ramirez. Sinking liner, and there's the first hit of the day for the Reds. Billy Hamilton. Well, our Panton cam look at this swing. 5,000 frames a second. And Billy gets a pretty good pitch to hit right there, just below the belt line, and hits it a line drive right out the center field. You know, they've been going after Billy really primarily just with fastballs. Maybe later in the count, if they get a couple of strikes on him, they'll try to make him chase on a breaking ball. But for the most part, it's four seamers up. Runner takes off, and the throw is not going to be in time to get Billy. And that is his 40th stolen base of the season. 
Picked a good pitch to go on. Hamilton did. It was a changeup, and Luke Croy did the best he could just to get it down there in time. But even a throw right on the money does not get Billy this time. Like to see him go in there a little bit more like he did there, which is feet first. Even though he does wear that little hand brace. Major routine ground ball to short. And the inning is over. One man left, middle of the third, no score. Down the race in the Central Division. We'll catch up with the Reds all-time saves leader Danny Graves and look back on the best moments from the first half of this year. A brand new Reds Weekly tonight at 6 on Fox Sports Ohio. Kyle Loesch to lead things off against Mike Leak in his scoreless game in the bottom of the third inning on a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday afternoon in Milwaukee. I mean, they had temperatures up over 90 degrees, 90 percent humidity yesterday. Today, zero humidity, and right at 70 degrees. And it feels even cooler than that because there is a breeze coming off uh, the lake, Lake Michigan. Well, right now you can tweet your fan photo. Using hashtag Ohio fan photo, and perhaps we'll show it during the game right here on Fox Sports Ohio. It's brought to you by AT&T. One out after the short fly ball. There's that wind. It's not a breeze. That's a wind coming off Lake Michigan. Bouncing ball in the right field. That'll be a broken bat single by Gomez. He reached. His first time up on an air by Todd Frazier, and now a single into right with one away. Jonathan Lucroy hooked a single through the hole in the left field his first time up. Series. Both of his home runs came to left field last night, including the game winner. Now both singles into left field. And he's a guy normally we see hitting the ball a lot the other way. Well, you know, he's a guy that we mentioned was very hot earlier this year when the Red saw him. Then he got very, very cold the last two weeks or so. 
You're living right when you find that hole a couple of times. He's done that twice, and you just wonder how far over you can play your third baseman off the line right there. For Santiago, shade a little bit towards second base in the event of a ground ball double play situation. Ryan Braun called out on strikes, and he did not like the strike three pitch. He was rung up on by Chris Siegel. Lopez, or Gomez rather, is taking a huge lead out there at second base. And you got to wonder this time, he looked like he wanted to run in this situation, identical situation, in the first inning. Well, you wonder, though, if they may have a stop sign on him because he's a very flamboyant type player. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they can run themselves out of innings, especially with Mezzarocco behind the plate who throws the ball well. There he goes. Tag, throw, inning over. Can't draw it up better than that. No, you cannot. Second double play drawn up behind Mike Leak today. One by Ramirez, and this is a broken bat from Ryan Braun. I'm Jim Day. A lot of eyes were opened up today with the uh, lineup that came out with Brian Pena stepping in for the Reds, hitting in the three hole today. But uh, Brian Price said before the game, we're hitting 186 in the last five games. I don't mind being a little more creative. At this point in time, we have nothing to lose with a lineup shuffle. And if you look at this series, Pena's been one of the few guys that have hit the ball hard. So he's just shuffling it up, trying to get something that will work. Well, Jim, thank you. And Payne hit the ball hard his first time up. I mean, you go through this batting order the first time through against Kyle Loesch today. And Payne by far with the hardest struck ball. Now, the second time through the order, they got their first base hit on a single by Hamilton. That one coming just above our broadcast booth. 0 oh 2 on Brian Payne. Runs four hits, one error for the Brewers. No runs, one hit, one error for the Reds. Reds have stranded two. Milwaukee has at least one hit in each of the first three innings. The Brewers have stranded three. A couple of big double play balls. One off the bat of Ramos Ramirez with two on, one out in the first. Two on, one out in the third. It was Ryan Braun to end the inning. The Brewers will be staying right here when the Reds get out of town. 
They'll take on the New York Mets for a four-game series. That one on the ground right at Reynolds, and the former third baseman will win. Against Pena going to the bag, one away, and then they they go on a quick three-game road trip. Now, the, the Brewers have not played the Giants or the Dodgers this year. The Reds are finished with both of those teams. Those are the top two teams, of course, over in the National League West. They've got six coming up against the Giants. And likewise against the Dodgers. First pitch swinging. Ludwig could tap her down to short. Two away. Jay Bruce struck out his only time up. And he's behind strike one here. This has not only been a slump on this road trip for Jay Bruce, but this has really been his most difficult year since becoming a regular player in the big league shortly after his initial call up. His career batting average is just under 260, so it's not like you're expecting Bruce to, to be a big average guy, but the batting average is significantly down. Almost 40 points below his career average. But, of course, those power numbers are the ones that have really taken a drop. Each of the last three years, he's knocked in 97, 99, and 109. That one off the end of the bat, but he'll take it. A broken back flare into right by Bruce, and that's a two-out single. Now, they hit a double last night, Jay Bruce did, but it was on a high bouncer that went over the head of the first baseman. This time, he gets a little bit of a break, getting the ball on the end of the bat, as you said, and find a hole. You never know what's going to spark it. Sure. Right now they're pitching Jay Bruce away though consistently away mainly because that front shoulder is still flying open a little bit. I think maybe what also is hurting Bruce this year Tom is the fact that he's lost some of his support players around him. You know you've had long absences without Joey Votto in the lineup. We have already a long and then even more anticipated absence of Brandon Phillips in the lineup. Ramirez will go the short round for the force out at second base. A hit and a man left. We play three and a half. No score in Miller Park.
Five Points Ohio brought to you by JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together. Buy Toyota. For over 30 Toyota offers, visit buyatoyota.com and enjoy boneless Thursdays at B Dubs. Specially priced boneless wings all day. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports. That's right up your alley right there, Mr. Welch. I love those things. What do they put on those, sugar? Well, it's some kind of a sugary mix. Which only enhances the flavor of those almonds, or I think they've got pecans. I know one thing, when I go down to the concession stand and buy some of those and bring them up here, I lay them up on the counter next to you, they disappear in a hurry. That one hooked to the left field. Over to cut it off is Ludwig and Aramis Ramirez for a base hit. I don't know if that's a new style that Ramirez is working on right now, where you tuck in the front of your jersey, and it's like you have the flap in the back. Have you noticed him wearing that this weekend? I, I have. Yeah, you, now that you bring it up, I see that. Aramis ever wearing his uniform like that before, but perhaps he likes it. Here's Ricky Weeks. And there's a strike. Ball misses low. Weeks hit a ground ball at the shortstop. Santiago and would be just fine if he were to do that again for Mike Lee. That is a hit in every inning so far for the Brewers. They got a single by Lou Croy in the first inning, a single by Reynolds in the second, back to back singles by Gomez and Lou Croy in the third, and now base hit by Ramirez starts the bottom of the fourth. Trying to pound Weeks inside, missing on back-to-back -back pitches. Two and one. Good fastball starting to pull the trigger there was Weeks, and he couldn't do it. Little sneaky fastball right there. Mike Leak, when he's on his game right, I mean, that same arm slot comes from every one of his pitches from the same slot. And he's got good run on that two seamer. And if you wait too long to try to get to it on the inner part of the plate, you're just going to break your bat. Weeks is ready to hit a fastball. So when you come in on him, if you're Mike Leak, you got to make sure that if you miss your spot right on the inside corner, you miss it inside off the plate. Now they're going to go away. Yep, he hits a car in the end of the way. And Bruce with a nice catch in front of the wall. Really nice catch right there. That ball just kept going and going. Looked like one of those backdoor. Fastballs that Mike Lee tried to get off the plate to go from a ball to a strike, but it floated right back over to the center of the dish. A weak stroke, it, but that's a great running catch by Jay Bruce right there. That boy had a lot of slice on it, didn't it? Yes, it did. Boy, what a nice play that was. There are a lot of right fielders around this game in either league that don't get to that ball. 
One away from Chris Davis. Davis robbed of a hit on a dazzling play. And if you weren't with us, what a play it was by Ramon Santiago. And the same on the other end of his throw by Brian Pena. It was just beautifully done on both ends. In their strike, one and one to Chris Davis. One strike on Davis. And a soft liner foul. This is our John Morrell hot dog play of the game. It's hard to imagine it's any better than this in real speed. Santiago from the outfield grass. And then the stretch. Delighting the pitcher on the mound. Another rocket out towards Bruce. Well, they have squared up. Back to back batters, loud outs for yeah. Leakes and Davis. It looks like that Mike Leak has gotten a little bit careless with his location here against two really good fastball hitters in Weeks and then Chris Davis. I mean, the way Mezzarocco moved inside on that, I think he wanted that ball in underneath Davis's hands, and it kind of floated out over the plate. So sometimes you make a bad pitch, you get a good result, and sometimes it's the other way around, too. Reynolds singled into center field on a 0-2 pitch his first time up, and he's behind strike one here. Reds will have Schumacher, Santiago, and then Lee coming up at the top of the fifth. But Leak with one out to go here in the last of the four. No score. Brewers about hit him five to two. Reynolds way out in front and waves through that pitch. Reynolds hitting under 200 now on the year. Batting 199 and playing regularly at the big league level. And it's exclusively because of the power he packs in that bat when he does hit it. 14 home runs and 33 batted in. Well, I think that Ron Renneke and the Brewers are just trying to make the best of a situation that is not ideal. They did have Juan Francisco in camp with them in spring training. He was the left-handed version of a guy trying to make the starting rotate or starting squad as a first baseman. As it turns out, he was let go, and they kept Overbay and Reynolds instead. And it's a platoon, but but not a straight platoon. And sometimes it goes on matchup. Sometimes it goes on number of days played in a row, giving a guy some rest. And sometimes I imagine it's probably a hunch on the part of Ron Renicky or Jerry Nera, the bench coach. Of course, Jerry still does those lineups in that calligraphy. I mean, it, it is just perfect, beautifully written. As he used to do with the Reds during his managerial days, and now does the same thing for these Brewers. I know Jim Day used to talk about that all the time, about sitting down and and just watching Jerry Naren do that, like a work of art, really. Take a look at that. You know, he probably ought to have his own font named after him. You're right. Just narrow. Mm -hmm. Maybe you got to dial up somebody at you know, Apple or Microsoft, somewhere like that, and get it dialed in. I want to ask Jim Day about that, though, because he used to spend a lot of time watching Jerry Nairn do that. We go to the fifth, no score.
during the 2014 season with MLB.TV Premium. Visit Reds.com for details. No score, end of four. Five hits for the Brewers, two hits for the Reds. Kyle Loesch and Mike Leak. And Schumacher to lead things off. Jim Day, I know you were uh, talking about before we even got here that beautiful handwriting that Jerry Naren used to do when he would fill out his lineup card during his managerial days with the Reds and obviously doing the same thing now as we saw a moment ago with these Brewers. I got to admit, I'm very, very impressed. And uh, I'll be honest, I was surprised when I found out that Jerry was actually doing it. The most impressed I was when an Asian player is in the lineup, he actually writes it out, let's say, in Japanese. He learns the symbols, if you will, of how to write it in Asian or Japanese. No and kidding. He, and he did that on the lineups for those days. That's when I was most impressed. And this all for a guy that's wearing spats at the same time. That is very, very impressive. Okay, Jerry's been around this game for a long time. Of course, he played in the big leagues. He's coached. He's managed. He's done just about everything you can in a big league uniform. Now, he was a backup catcher with the Yankees to Thurman Munson. Well, wasn't he the guy that was the first guy in the lineup behind the plate after the tragic passing of their captain Thurman Munson? Indeed he was. I think that was back in 1980. He's got a son uh, who's also a catcher in the minor league system right here with the Brewers. I remember Connor as a I guess he was about 16 or 17 years old when Jerry was managing the Reds. Yep. Come around, take some batting practice. Off the outside corner, one ball and two strikes on Ramon Santiago. Started two, did he go? No on the appeal down to... Brian Gorman. So now two and two count on Santiago after a leadoff base hit by Schumacher here in the fifth. That check swing has kind of been a subject of hot debate here over the last couple of games. Of course, uh, it cost Brian Price the opportunity to watch the final what, three innings of the game here on Friday night after he was ejected on a check swing, a call that was made by the home plate umpire at the time. Now at second base, David Rackley, who said that Mezzarecco went around. Runner goes and has taken high ball four, and now you have the perfect scenario. Two on, nobody out, and the pitcher who is a good bunner coming up. That's the first walk of the game issued by Kyle Loaf. And that's after being ahead of the count on Santiago at 0 and 2. Can't roll it out there any better than that. So second and third. 
with one out in the inning and Billy Hamilton coming up in a scoreless game. That was a smart play by Mike Leak. I think he looked down the third baseline. He saw Ramos Ramirez playing so close. He realized that the Brewers are going to put on that swing play. And that's a play in which Segura the shortstop is going to head to third base and he's going to be the lead man to get there ahead of the runner. So Segura was coming over here and Ramirez was coming straight in and Leak bunted it this way to make sure that there was no play in third base at all. So good job by Leak really in recognizing the defense before he even laid the bunt down. So now the Brewers will bring their infield in. Hamilton one of two in the game. He's fly to center, single to center, stolen a base. And this is in the air. Right field coming in is Braun. He'll make the catch. Here comes Schumacher. Here comes the throw. Offline. Hamilton the sack fly run batted in. And the Reds take a one nothing lead here in the fifth inning. Uh, getting the ball into the outfield so key right here Ryan Braun just taking a shot just in case that ball is right on the money and it would have had to been right on the money. So Billy Hamilton in this ball game and we've said it so many times when he does something offensively the Reds turn out to be able to score. He's been on he's stolen a base and he's also driven in a run with a fly ball. Todd Frazier the batter 0 for 2 is struck out swinging and grounded to short and it's in there strike. Frazier having had an 11 pitch at bat his first time up today. Loesch wound up striking him out. And then Frazier chased very early in the count and a routine ground ball to short ending the third inning. Santiago leads down at third. They try and see if Frazier will chase a fastball up in the strike zone. It's two and two. Now the payoff pitch to Todd Frazier. In the air and Weeks will backpedal to the outfield grass to retire the side but the Reds break through. They lead one nothing.
ballpark, we have the Reds four for 48 ticket deal where you buy four tickets, $48, and you receive four free Reds hats. Now, I don't know where you're going to beat that. 513-381-RED-S or log on to Reds.com for more details. Mike Leake is handed a 1-0 lead. He'll face 8-9-1 and one in the batting order. Segura, Loesch, and then Gomez. Ball and two strikes on Segura. And it's popped up. Schumacher's there. One out. Well, Mike Week has been pretty good with that, that slider of his today. Starting in the middle of the play and having it break hard away from right handers. And that's really been the one pitch that's kind of been missing for him lately is that, you know, he talked about the snap in his pitches. And, you know, every pitcher, just like hitters, go through ups and downs. Some days you go out there and you feel great, like you can snap off the breast breaking ball of your life. The next time, no matter how hard you try, it kind of rolls up there. But today's been a good day so far for him. Well, continues a string of a hit allowed every inning by Leak, and here he allows it to the opposing pitcher, Kyle Loach. Loach just kind of waited on a breaking ball. I think this is one of the slowest pitches that Leak has thrown on the day, less than 80 miles an hour, and just kind of dumps it right there in the left field. Gomez reached on an air by Frazier leading off the bottom of the first inning on a little tapper that just rolled under Todd's glove. And then he singled into right field in the third inning. Boy, this guy takes a hat. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. I can't imagine there's a more aggressive player. All around aggressively natured guy. Mm -hmm. More so than this guy. You see him smell the bat after that foul ball. Want to see if it smelled like burning yep. wood. He'll do that after a lot of his cuts. Sinking liner. And Jay Bruce dives, can't get it, rolls all the way to the wall. This is going to tie the game. Or at least he'll try and tie the game. And it will tie the game. And this lead has vanished. That is the danger of leaving your feet for a ball. Everybody wants you to dive all the time. But that is the danger if you don't get it. Uh, the only time you dive is when you have a legitimate chance of making the catch. And I really thought that Bruce did have a good chance of making that catch. In fact, he barely made miss making a tremendous diving catch. And still the good relay by the Reds. Schumacher with the peg right on the money. But Kyle Osher scores all the way around from first base in there just a hair ahead of time. Loesch is lucky he did not get injured on that slide. He was planning on going in standing up all the way. And that's about as late a slide as you'll see any player ever take. So now to go ahead and runs at third. It all started with a one out single by the pitch.
What a play by Frazier. And what a pick by Pena. And the go-ahead run stays at third base, two out in the inning. Boy, Pena has really played a solid first base for the oh, Reds in a limited time. That. Frazier does the right thing by checking the third baseman or making sure that Gomez is not going to try to score on that. And when he came up and looked at first base, he realized he better get rid of that ball in a hurry. And that is one super pick by Brian Pena. Man. Now you have Ryan Braun, who has struck out looking. And bounced into a 5-3 double play on a broken back. The runners at first and second, and only one out. The bat followed the ball out to Todd Frazier. And the runner, Gomez, who was at second base at the time, was trying to steal third. The Frazier fielded the ball, was tagged in and threw out Braun. Foul ball, one and one to Braun. Leak working out of the regular windup. 1-1 one, one game, runner at third. 2-1 pitch to Braun is a breaking ball at the knees, a called strike. And again, Braun not happy. Well, Braun is really committed to getting a good pitch to hit. And I think good hitters just wait, and they're not afraid to get the two strikes. He was rung up last night on a pitch by Broxton. He was rung up earlier today on a pitch he didn't like. I mean, he's just not chasing pitches out of the zone. And I think guys that consistently put good wood on the ball get good pitches to him. And Braun obviously is one of those guys. and delivers and a little roll it's not going to be an easy play Schumacher throw yeah. and Braun beat it out two to one Milwaukee in front uh, Ryan Braun beating the shift right here Schumacher pulled way around towards second base and he still runs pretty well down the line with a man on third base. That infield hit plates a run. And it's not unusual at all to see Brian Ron, Braun, Ryan Braun hit the ball to right field. They're the percentage of hits that he's had to right field over the last four seasons. None more than this year when 46% of them have gone to opposite field. I think a lot of that, if you look at those numbers again, it's kind of interesting. It's a guy that uses the entire field. But I would imagine that the majority of these hits down here at the very bottom are ones that he gets with two strikes on him, where he's willing now to hit the ball the other way like that. He got down the count, two strikes, and put the ball in play, and something good happened. Well, Chris Hennebeck's a question. 
You just talked about the Reds having a shift. If 46% of any player's base hits are the other way, and I think you make a great point, probably safe to assume that of that 46%, there's a good percentage of those that have probably come with two strikes. Why are you still playing him as a pull hitter in a two-strike count? That's a good question. Or I can't a answer. pull hitter in any count. If almost half of the player's hits are going the other way, then why are you shifting? Well, those are hits from this year. Maybe they haven't factored in the weighted amount, you know, this year compared to other years. I can't answer that question. You know, the problem with having metrics and data at your disposal, you ask questions that we've never asked before. It started with a base hit by the pitcher with one out in the inning. The Brewers score twice and lead by a run. The Nationals and the Reds will square off in game two of their series. That'll begin with Reds live at 3.30 right here on Fox Sports Ohio. And then after the post game, shoot on over to Fox Sports 1, the Tribe and the Royals. The Cleveland Indians, winners of seven of their last ten. They picked up a game on Detroit last night. They are five and a half behind the Tigers in the American League Central Division. And they have the same record as the Reds. Two over 551 up, 49 down. Ryan Payne to lead things off here in the Reds' sixth inning. The Reds scored in the fifth. Brewers come right back against Lee. Can get two in the bottom of the inning. And one on Brian Pena.
Two and two to Bryant. And fouled away. Ryan Ludwig to follow here in the red six inning. And then Jay Bruce. And the good crowds for all three games of this series. They had up over 33,000 here last night. It's right around where the Brewers are averaging for the year. Gomez will run down to fly ball in short left center. Top number one here in the six. Day off tomorrow, but starting at 6.30. On Friday night, we'll get you ready for Reds action 30 minutes before the start of that game and every game with Reds Live presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. Fly ball to left center field. Playable for Gomez in front of the wall. Well, carried a little further than it looked like it might when it left the bat. One step short of the wall, but it's out number two. Now, the ball definitely carries better here during the day, and with the roof open the way it is, at least half the roof open, that ball took off. And, you know, the reason it stayed in here was that Ludwig out just a little bit ahead of that pitch on a breaking ball by Loesch. You know, when we say that Kyle Loesch converted from being a fly ball pitcher to a ground ball pitcher, it's not like he became one of the more prolific ground ball pitchers in the league. He just became more aware of using that two seam fastball. You know, when he was with the Reds, you could always tell early in the game whether he was going to have a good game with the Reds or not by watching the radar gun. It always seemed like when Loesch got his fastball up around 93 or 94, he was destined for a good outing. When it was not a good fastball game for Loesch, he struggled. But now you can't tell at all because his expert command of his off speed stuff has really offset the fact that he's lost a couple of miles an hour on his fastball. Two down for Jay Bruce. And a fastball away. Bruce has struck out swinging and dumped a single into right field his last time up. He's exactly the type of pitcher Loesch is who's really given the Reds trouble, especially on this trip. I mean, you could say everybody has, but I mean, the three pitchers that the Reds faced in New York, Phelps, and then Brandon McCarthy, and then Kuroda, none of those guys were overpowering pitchers. McCarthy threw the hardest, but Kuroda didn't even get up over about 90 miles an hour. And just a little bit of movement here, a little bit of taking off pit speed there, and they were able to get the Reds to kind of miss the sweet part of the bats. Three and two now on Jay Bruce. Major League Baseball just announced moments ago the results of the third competitive balance lottery. Which impacts a draft order next year. Part of the new basic agreement as Bruce draws a two out wall. Part of the agreement between Major League Baseball and the Players Union where clubs with the lowest revenues and in the smallest markets get the opportunity to obtain additional draft picks through a lottery. The 10 clubs with the lowest revenues and the 10 in the smallest markets were entered into a lottery for the six elections immediately following the first round and then trickled through into the second round and that's where the Reds wound up so the Marlins the Rockies the Cardinals the Brewers the Padres and the Indians will make a pick each after the first round next year 
And then after the second round next year, the Reds will get an additional pick. Followed by the Athletics, Mariners, Twins, Orioles, and Diamondbacks. Major League Baseball just moments ago. by much. Yeah. And the struggles continue for Mezzarocco in a major way. Injury update last night Christopher Negron took him right off the side of the head last night was down for a few minutes but stayed in the game now many times after the game they'll put him through a concussion test that is not the case with Christopher Negron he passed all the uh, tests before they would give him a concussion test if you will so he did not take that test and you guys were talking about last night perhaps everyone going to the double flap helmet which is mandatory in the minor leagues which he spent most of, most of his career but he said you know i've worked really hard to earn that one flap and i'm not going to change right now most guys just not comfortable with the double flap there's the leadoff double by ricky weeks to start things here in the milwaukee sixth inning the brewers holding a two to one lead didn't take very long for Ricky Weeks. I mean, he jumped all over that pitch, the first one that it was offered up there by Mike Lee. And this is where Lee got a little sloppy with the lower part of the order last time. He got a line drive out out of Weeks' last time up on a nice play by Jay Bruce and then a running catch by Jay Bruce off a liner by Chris Davis. But those pitches were left out over the plate early in the count. And a right field line. Bruce unable to get there. Now here's a guy that's been robbed twice in the game. Davis, he was the one that hit that ball in the hole at short of the great play. Plays really on a single play by Santiago and Pena. And then he too, like Ricky Weeks, hit a line drive at Jay Bruce in right field. Count on Chris Davis. 
And Leak ahead of him now, and nothing in two. Leak is struck out three. He's allowed nine hits in five and plus innings. And I'm not sure any hit in this game was bigger than the one that came from Bloch. Leak had just been given a one nothing lead. Retired the first batter in that Milwaukee fifth inning. Time was called. But then Loesch, a rare base hit, and he dropped into left field, would score when the very next batter, Gomez, hit that sinking liner down the right field line that turned into a triple. And then two batters later, Braun, the infield roller to the right side, plating Gomez, thus a 2-1 to one Milwaukee lead. One and two to Davis. That is a fair ball, barehanded by Frazier. And a pick at the other end by Pena. Boy, he has earned his money picking him out of the dirt today. Nice play there on both ends once more. Frazier barehanding that ball and Pena to pick. And Davis has got to be wondering what did he do to upset somebody? What a great shot right here. Todd Frazier, we don't see it there, but eyeballing that ball right into his bare hand. Trying to find a seam and then throwing it across the infield for the out. Actually never really was able to get a four seam grip on that ball. He just had to grip it and rip it. Coming down the left field line and not a play off the bat of Mike Reynolds. Are oh, you seeing this inning? The Brewer is really coming out of the gates, ready to swing the bats on the first pitch. We did some interesting research before the game time. We talked about it. The number of home runs that are hitting and what counts are the best counts to hit home runs this on. Believe it or not, the first pitch that you see is by far the most home run friendly count. The thing that I really think is interesting is the 2 0 count and the 3 1 count are among the fewest. In baseball, we'll go back to that again. I mean, th this is really what surprised me out of this. These are the number of home runs that are hitting the National League this year, and what the counts are. But a 3-1 count and a 2-0 count are the third and fourth best counts not to hit home runs on. The stingiest of counts, ranking really right behind the 0-2 count. Well, then that's the thing that I think puts that into perspective. And here is a long home run by Reynolds. And this bad boy is still the one no walker. So we go back to that graphic. And you say, okay, what was the count on Reynolds before hitting that home run? It was one and one. Yeah, they got a hanging breaking ball. I mean, on the inner part of the plate, Reynolds bails a little bit anyway. A lot of his home runs are to left field, and a lot of them are in the upper deck. And Leak has given up in a hurry here in this inning. Well, I mean, they have hit Leak hard today. Uh, but let's go now to, to this number. Now, this was the this was the count with Reynolds who hit that last home third run. Most. That is the third best count in which they hit a home run. I got to tell you, the part that puts it in perspective, you always talk about hitters count three and one, two and zero. Oh. To think that only 14 more home runs. 14. That's a good month for some of the top sluggers. Only 14 more home runs have been hit on a three and one count than an 0 and two count. Take a look at that. 130 on a 3 1. 14 fewer on nothing and two. Now, I'm not surprised at all. Are you, Chris, on 1 and 0 and 1 and 1? 
That no, doesn't surprise I mean, me. And, and if you look at the numbers in a more uh, aggregate way, by far the most home runs are hit early in the count rather than later in the count. But the 0-2 really surprises me. And really what it tells me is that when hitters get down 0-2, that's when they really start concentrating. And maybe they're relaxing a little bit, just trying to put the ball in play, and a la, there comes a home run from not over swinging. I think you get into a hit pitcher's count or a hitter's count of three and one, two and zero, oh, and that's when hitters have a tendency to over swing a little bit, and they don't get the home runs you think that they would. Now it would be interesting to back that up a little bit. That's just strictly home runs, right? I think what would be interesting is is we come back to that later on and look at what are the best batting averages well in counts yeah and I think rather than just batting averages I'd like to see what line drive percentages are in those counts because I want to see when a guy really hits the ball hard not when he dumps one in for a base hit that counts as a base hit or a dribbler up the middle something like that I want to see what counts are the best for laying the wood to the baseball Foul ball, as Rocco trying to get that lead runner out at second base. Brewers had three hits, scoring two runs in the fifth. They have three hits, scoring two runs so far here in the sixth, and they have 11 hits in five and a third innings in this game. So Loshu had a base hit his last time up. Strikes out, unable to put down a bunt this time up. Strikeouts in the game for Leak. He has not walked a batter. Reds led one nothing after four and a half. Breaking a scoreless tie in the top of the fifth inning, but now it's four unanswered by this Brewers team. RBIs in the fifth inning by Gomez and Braun, and the two run home run from Reynolds here in the sixth. Reds have action in their bullpen. J.J. Hoover is throwing. And the way the Reds have been struggling on offense, it's pretty much a lead pipe cinch that unless Schumacher and Santiago start the next inning by reaching base, the Reds will bat for Leak, who's due up third. One and one to Gomez. And a foul ball back out of play, and Leak gets ahead of him in one ball and two strikes. Gomez swung so hard he. He fell down, and we'll see that from time to time. Went and smelled his bat again. Man, man, has the game changed. I mean, can you imagine? I know I sound like an old coach. Can you imagine doing that against, say, Nolan Ryan, swinging and falling down? You'd be down on the seat of your pants the next two pitches, too. Well, they had it going on last night in Pittsburgh. Yes, they did. Well, that was a way out of a ball game, too, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Pirates and the Dodgers in a beanball war. There's a rocket to 
Frazier climbs the ladder to take away a hit. But a two-run home run by Reynolds. At the end of six, the Brewers lead by three. Don't miss a special post-game fireworks show featuring a live performance by the Cincinnati Pops Orchestra presented by homemade brand ice cream. Plus, make sure you take advantage of the Reds 4 for 48 ticket deal all weekend long. For tickets, call 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations or, of course, reds.com slash tickets. And well, the, nobody does fireworks the way the Reds do. And a live Cincinnati Symphony Pops musical accompaniment to the finest fireworks in town. Reds down by three. They've got three runs. Mark Reynolds is the one to hit the two-run homer to put the Brewers up on top in the sixth inning. And we go top of seven with Skip Schumacher leading it off. Another first pitch strike for Lowe. She's been good all day long with that Lead off pitch that time feathering in a breaking ball. A one and one on Schumacher to be followed by Santiago. Lead goes six innings today, and though officially not out of the game, he's more than likely not going to bat here in this inning. Two up third. I see already with a bat in hand, helmet on. In the air right at Gomez, and that'll take care of Schumacher. One out. Well, don't miss your chance to answer Reds trivia, win great prizes, and possibly appear on Reds Live on Friday at the Reds Fan Camp. Join us at the Holy Grail on the Banks at 6 o'clock Friday night. Looking forward to that. Reds getting back on the home front where they played so well. Leading up to the All-Star break, winning 8 out of 11, winning all three series against these Brewers, the Cubs, and the Pirates. But they are still looking for their first win since a week ago last Sunday. Season high, five-game losing streak. And they're in the seventh inning today, trailing by three. A 
Yeah, so had Donald Lutz down there in the dugout with the helmet on. So Heisey a minute ago. Heisey now in the on deck circle. Tulela check in with Jim Dick. Let's give you another injury update. Zach Kozar took that pitch off of his right hand last night. As you guys reported, x rays thankfully were negative. That hand big time swollen today, particularly a middle finger on his right hand, which you're looking at right now. But the biggest problem is his index finger and particularly the tip of it. Now, he took his turn in batting practice today. He can hit. He's having most trouble throwing the ball in a pinch. He said he could go in there and do it, but uh, we won't see Zach unless the Reds score some runs here and tie it up and perhaps go into extra innings. But good sign that nothing is indeed broken in there because if they are short or anywhere in the system, it is certainly up the middle in the infield. And of course, they're still playing a, a player short on their bench. They replaced a pitcher yesterday, Logan Andrusik, with a pitcher, Curtis Parts, brought up from the minor leagues. So the Reds continue to go to the post day after day after day. With on any given day, and today would be the man who bats now, Lutz, another rookie in a grown. Of course, they sent Soto out of here. And there's a high fly ball in the right center field. Chasing is Braun, and that one is off the wall by Donald Lutz. That just kept going and going, didn't yep. it? Sure did. That's two of them. The, the ball by Ludwig, and now the ball by Lutz. That ball looked like when it came off the bat, it was going straight in the air. And Braun went over like it was going to be right at the edge of the grass in the warning track. But when big Donald Lutz hits it, it goes a long, long way. Very little humidity in the air. Maybe the air a little bit thin today. Hits right at the base of the wall. I think that had Ryan Braun thought that ball was going to go as far as it did, he would have been able to camp himself under it right at the base of the wall, but it just kept going and going. And that may mark the last batter for Kyle Loesch here this afternoon. Well, 103 pitches for Loesch, and that's going to do it. The uh, skyline chili call to the bullpen. Zach Duke will come on to face Billy Hamilton when we return. And photo, our fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. Is that our main man, Joe, from Woodland, Texas? Sitting in front of one of the control boards back at Control Central in Woodland, Texas, where our signal eventually becomes all put together and emanates from back to Fox Sports, that Ohio. Is him. 
He's in charge of running all our commercials. And, and he's become such a Reds fan that they now call him Joe Hyo. Nice. I love it. All right, Joe. I'm a little surprised, and so are you, Tom, about the Brewers making a move there on Kyle Loesch. After all, he's given up only four hits on the afternoon. That last hit was a fly ball by Donald Lutz. It just seemed to just keep going and going. He's over the 100 pitch mark, but certainly not by very much, just a few over. But I guess as good as their bullpen has been, especially Zach Duke, why not go to him? Well, and he comes in a game and gets an out on one pitch. I guess that's why he goes. Reds are down four to one. Reds got on the board in the fifth inning. One is at second and third and one out for Billy Hamilton and he played at Skip Schumacher with a fly ball but everything has gone south and sin. It started with a one out single by Loesch in the fifth. Bruce trying to make the diving play came up just short triple run scoring triple by Gomez and then an infield roller broke the one one tie off the bat of Ryan Braun in the sixth with a man aboard Mark Reynolds a two run home run. Four runs, 11 hits for Milwaukee. One run, just four hits for the Reds. Mike Leak out of the game and taking over for him is right-hander J.J. Hoover. Yeah, the Red starters right now have to feel like that their margin of error is very, very small. I mean, if you give up two or three runs, it, it seems like you're down the point where you're almost out of the ball game. the way the offense has gone. The Brewers have 11 hits. Reds have four. J.J. Hoover is going to get a little action in here to try to maybe hold him right there and also right himself. Lucroy two out of three a couple of singles robbed of a hit and a nice play by Frazier and Pena back in the fifth inning. One and two on Jonathan Lucroy. These Brewers basically have been the National League Central Division leader from day one. It wasn't day one but basically day one. They have been alone or at least tied for first since May or April the 5th. So essentially day six. Now 
Yeah, and I was talking about Hoover writing himself. It really, you know, you go back the last three games that he's pitching, he's given up runs in all those games. In fact, he's given up runs in five of his last eight appearances. And that's not the trend you want to see as a reliever. He blows that one right by Jonathan Lucroy. Kind of rears back and plays good old country fastball right there. Does JJ Hoover? We'll make that our Cholula flamethrower strike out of the game. Brought to you by some darn good hot sauce, and that pitch going 93 miles an hour. Ryan Braun now to batter. He broke the 1 1 time with that infield dribbler his first time up, and again, the Reds really. Sheet, if you will, and shift, if you will, at least the right side of their infield. We brought up earlier that 46% of Braun's base hits this year have gone the other way. Yeah, but you know, Tom, I think what you're saying is that what we're saying is that we showed you a graph that 46% of his hits go that way, but maybe not 46% or more of his ground balls go that way. Obviously, the way the Reds are playing him, they feel that when he puts a ball on the ground, he pulls it, and maybe when he puts a ball into the air, he begins to spray it. That's where you get your base hits. LeBron has, what, five hits in this series. Two of them have come to left field. They were his first two hits in the series. He had a single to left and a two run double. That was a ball that flew over Heisey's head in left field. He's made an out on a fly ball to right. He's hit a home run to right. He has a single to center. And that little infield hit to the right side, which really doesn't count for anything. That was just bat met ball somehow, some way. But it counted for an RBI. In the air to Bruce. And there are two away here in the inning. Next batter, the third baseman, Morales I have to believe that there is somebody or some organization, or maybe baseball. Organizations are calculating this kind of thing themselves. We do know there will be more than twice the number of shifts employed by Major League Baseball defenses this year than there has ever been in the history of baseball. But what would be interesting is, and you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna shift based on data. Don't you have to be able to prove that the data worked or didn't work at the end of the year? Well, is an overall scoring down significantly along with batting averages and earned run averages?
And Aaron Mazda pitch by pitch surrounds the Brewer starter, Kyle Loach. Ten game winner on the year. He had a lot of off speed pitches working, as you see right there, curveballs and change ups. And he leads the ball game after six innings with a three run lead to a standing ovation from the faithful here. Six and two thirds exactly for Loach. Only one run. Six innings for Mike Leak, four runs. Leak did not walk a batter, but he struck out four. And right now, looking at a the wrong side of the scoreboard. That's how IGS bringing the energy pitchers comparison here today. Zach Duke came on behind Loesch, threw one pitch to retire Billy Hamilton, and now Duke out of the game as they'll bring in a, a second straight left-hander. And a left-hander, quite honestly, the Reds have had pretty good success against this year. They scored a run against him. They had two, two hits against him. But boy, he got down to business after allowing a home run and a bunt single. He struck out three in a row the other night. That's left-hander Will Smith. Uh, he's one of the most often used pitchers in the league. In fact, with this appearance today, he will tie Brad Ziegler of the Arizona Diamondbacks for most appearances out of the bullpen. 52 of them already. 45 and two-thirds innings. Having a pretty good year. Reds are down three as they bat here in the top of the eighth inning. That is a pitch that uh, Smith struck out Frazier on here on Monday night. Off speed at him way out in front. Smith's got a little giddy up in that fastball when he decides to turn that loose. He humped up to 95 here on Monday night. You, know, you made that observation right before the break and, and somewhere sometime we are going to see some statistical data and I, and I really don't know at the end of the day you know, it's kind of like defensive matrix and we've talked about that before is there's a base hit by Frazier into center field I don't really know if there's anything that that can definitively tell you if that's accurate or not you know, we've seen second baseman rank higher than Brandon Phillips in defensive matrix, but I think you and I would definitely agree there is not a second baseman you would take on the planet ahead of Phillips as a second baseman. Agreed. But you made the observation about, you know, offense being down. Well, but offense has been going down for a number of years now, and, and you know, most people that follow baseball would tell you that is a direct result, as this will be a double play here. Uh, Major League Baseball really stepping up and cutting down on the performance enhancing drugs. I mean ever since they implemented that policy it's almost been since day one where baseball has turned the other way. Pitching numbers are better. Offensive numbers have declined and continues to decline. So really in order to to determine whether the defensive shifts have had a positive effect on reducing the number of runs scored. You have to pick a point at which you think that the performance enhancing drugs are almost all out of baseball. Mm -hmm. And then determine from there why is the scoring continuing to go down. Mm -hmm. I mean are pitchers getting better are hitters getting worse is defense being situated more. I mean there are more shifts this year than last year sure. more of that last year than the year before. And I think they're even more dramatic this year. I mean, no we, doubt about yeah, it. We, we see some teams like the Pirates, for instance. I mean, they're running all over the field, seemingly on every different type of pitch count. Yep. And they wholeheartedly believe in it. In fact, I thought one of the most interesting comments I'd heard all year when we were talking to Clint Hurdle about that was that he sees a day when fielders will have a, a wristwatch on that'll be essentially a GPS that on it'll be pre-programmed for the opposition. And it'll show in there on a particular count, certain situation, certain pitcher on the mound, where you should be. And those things can be very accurate. A couple of steps one way or another may make a big difference in a ball game.
mean, even this shift that the Brewers are putting on Ryan Ludwig right here, by old standards, would be dramatic. I sure. mean, do, if this was happening five or six years ago, we'd be doing nothing but talking about why the Brewers are so extreme in their defensive placement. And we would be urging Ryan Ludwig to hit the ball the other way. But what baseball has proved that it's simply not an easy thing to do. You go up there with your, a swing that you've, you know, practiced and ingrained over the course of your lifetime, if not at least the course of over your professional life. And now all of a sudden you're going to go up there and try to change that just because they moved the second baseman? Well, but again, you know, it does bring up the question that if I've heard one baseball guy say at one time, I have heard it. Seven million and fifty two thousand times. It's a game of adjustments. Well, if other teams are making adjustments to you, you have to find a way then to make adjustments to it. Yeah, you're, you're right, but I think the, the over the, the prevailing thought for a hitter is to go up there and hit the ball hard. And then you let the direction take care of itself. You just want to put a bullet on the ball somewhere. Not necessarily guide it in the hole. Brewers will bat in the bottom of the eighth. They're leading four to one. Dollar ticket deal this weekend. We'll talk about that in just a second. Well, here we go. Purchase four tickets for only forty-eight dollars and receive four free Reds hats. Don't miss this exciting weekend full of fireworks, giveaways, and live mascot races featuring the Washington Nationals racing presidents. You got to see it live for tickets. Call five one three three one Reds. Visit select Kroger locations or log on to Reds.com/slash four for forty-eight. And here's what you'll see this weekend. Whole bunch of pitching as the Washington Nationals bring a couple of guys with under three ERAs to town. Lefty Gio Gonzalez, also a solid pitcher. Reds will counter with Simon Cueto and Latos, their three best pitchers, if you will. We're on the air for Friday and Sunday's game, as well as Saturday's game. All three games. And no one could use an off day more than the Cincinnati Reds at this point. Tom and Chris. Hey, uh, by the way, Jim, uh, a little while ago, I had a chance in between innings to visit with Bernie Brewer and Bernie Brewer's executive assistant, for lack of a better word, or a better term, as Jumbo Diaz takes over on the mound. Bernie was taking a break and getting something to drink, getting out of the bright sunshine. And they have said, you are more than welcome. Yeah. The next time we come to Milwaukee, long before the game, now they won't let you do it obviously during the game, but long before the game, if you'd like to come out here and go down the slide, they'd be happy to have you. 
Well, I told you I'd take one for the team, so I believe we come back here in September. It's on. Bernie Brewer, I will see you up there. All right. If you're telling the truth, that is. I am. I am. I'm not pulling your leg. I, I'm totally serious about this. Bernie Brewer has an executive oh. assistant. Well, you and know. Not, on, not even Tom Brenneman has an executive no, assistant. No, I don't. Well, and Jim Lord Day. knows if somebody needs one, I need one. Well, Jim Day has a PR agent right now. Good going there, partner. My wife gives herself a nickname that she's like the <laughs> executive assistant and not happy about. No, she's not the executive assistant. She, she is, is the, the CEO That's exactly of the house. Right. That's exactly right. But yes, I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, it's no different than Mr. Redlegs or Mr. Red or Rosie Red. They are busy, man. I mean, whether it's, you know, here at the ballpark for all the great charity events and, uh, and local community events and that Bernie Brewer, in this case, has to make sure that there's somebody to help him out with his schedule. It's like Chris Welsh. I wonder if you could get me a couple of gigs like you got Jim Day. Fill in some off days. I mean, you, you, you could cut a pretty good deal and, and, and you did it between breaks and innings. I mean if what if I gave you a whole day what you could arrange for Jim Day and we, myself. We, we, can, we can get some stuff done now. Yeah. There's no doubt about it, but they said you are in all seriousness this, I'm not pulling your leg because I have been pulling your leg on a couple of other topics on this trip, <laughs> but um, On this one I'm totally serious. They'd love to have you come as long as I don't have to grow a stash like Bernie I'm in. All right. Two and two on weeks And that's strike three jumbo We saw him in a game last night and a big fella Struck out two out of the three batters he faced, and he strikes out weeks to open up the same thing. I tell you, the thing that Jumbo has really impressed me with is his command. I mean, he's just not out there trying to throw it hard. He's keeping the ball down. His fastball has been consistently down around the knees. Slider and split finger pitch, the same for that. Nice job today by J.J. Hoover. It's about how he has had a very, very tough year. And you know, there are days he comes out and throws the ball like he did today. And then there are other days where obviously it's a completely the other way. But a 1-2-3 seventh inning for J.J. Hoover today. Against three good hitters in Luke Croy, Braun, and Ramirez. 0-2 oh on Chris Davis. Straight up in the air. And Jumbo will take care of the first two batters here in the bottom of the year. Well, you think about all the years, and Chris, you were talking about the, the total number of games that Jumbo Diaz has pitched in his minor league career. All of the bus rides. South Georgia, Great Falls, Ogden, Columbus, Georgia, Barrow Beach. There's a fly ball in the left field, and that's going to carry out of here, and it's a two-homer game for Mark Reynolds. Guy hitting a buck 99. It's two bombs off of you today. And that looked like a hanging slider right there. He got a a high sinker. Sinking fastball in the inner part of the plate off of Mike Leak, and he's got a hot zone on the slider as well. That ball is a bomb, both of them. I mean, it swings like that to make you almost ignore the number of strikeouts that Mark Reynolds will give you, and the batting average that hovers right around the 200 mark. And this for a ball club, well, they hit some home runs. Four of them last night. 
two of them this afternoon. You know, Chris, uh, I'm sure the, the talk shows will be lit up over the next 24 hours. That tends to happen when, you know, one, the home team is not playing well, and they're not playing well. There's a ground ball to short. They're going to get a full day off like they will have tomorrow. I want to ask you about that when we return. Reds will bat in the ninth inning, trailing 5-1. Breaks down the game and brings you the first interviews with Brian Price. Reds Live brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. No longer a save chance for Francisco Rodriguez. After the home run by Reynolds made it a four run spread, Jeremy Jeffress instead will come on. 26 year old right hander from South Boston. Virginia, originally a first-round pick of the Brewers. They traded him away to Kansas City. He's traded there to Toronto. He's a first-round pick all the way back in 2006. We remember this young man and all the tools, but his life off the field helped everything nearly get away from him. Uh, you're right. He has failed the minor league drug test twice. For recreational drugs, I think it was a use of marijuana, but so he was one strike away from being banned from baseball for life. And some things have been revealed recently more regarding his some of the medical problems that he has had. But the Brewers have gotten him back, and no one has ever questioned the fact that he has a plus plus arm. And they think that now that he's got his life straightened out off the field, that they may have caught lightning in a bottle like they had hoped to do when he drafted him the first round 16th pick overall out of South Boston Virginia Halifax County High School. All right now let me ask you about this red situation you have been around the game a long time as a player you played on some good teams you played on some bad teams you broadcast some good teams broadcast some bad teams. You know the first thing you you hear from a lot of people and I have to readily admit before we go any further that I would be part of this crap that says somebody's got to show a little fire here and, 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 and maybe get a little upset now I also understand other people that say well really at the end of the day what's that doing for you you know it's like when your kid throws a temper tantrum and you're looking at him and you're like okay what did that accomplish but in baseball it's Bruce grounds out. The Reds are two outs away from their first winless road trip spanning five or more games since 2009. And it has been ugly. You brought up earlier. 
no offense. By and large, they've not had good starting pitching. They have been abysmal on defense. Their running game has not been good. And Brian Price made the comment after the game last night, they have missed a number of signs. Mm -hmm. So what say you? You got to go out there and just keep plugging away. I mean, I don't think any kind of a team meeting or a shouting tantrum by, you know, whether it's Brian Price or Jay Bell or, or whether it's Todd Frazier or Devin Mezzarocco, they're all in this together. They've got to use this losing streak to galvanize this ball club and realize those guys in the clubhouse are the guys in the clubhouse that are going to have to fight their way out of it. There's no help coming from elsewhere. Don't depend on a trade or the cavalry coming up from the minor leagues. They've got to look within themselves, and that starts by looking in the mirror, saying, what can I do today to win this at bat or win this inning? And that sounds like the, you know, the age-old thing that your high school coach used to say, but bottom line in sports, that's what it takes. And I don't think that Brian Price would be, if there was a, a magic potion that he could pour over the bat rack, he would have done it by now. Sure. But, but then... What is there to be said for those that have done it a different way? You know, you brought up the name last night as a perfect example, Lou Pinella. Now, I think it's probably safe to say back when he was a younger man and managing the Reds, that he might have handled a situation after a game like today or a road trip like today a little bit differently. Well, so, yeah. I mean, is that, you know, everybody's different. Yeah, you're probably right. And I think the expectation of this ball club is much higher than the way they played, especially on this road trip. But you also got to ask yourself, is this ball club playing about where you expect they would play, given the fact that they've lost their two biggest players? And they don't have a minor league system right now that is flush full of really anybody that can come up and help them? Great point. Here's Schumacher. Legs are down 5-1. to one. They were swept in New York by the Yankees. And they are now away from suffering perhaps an even bigger blow because when they were losing to the Yankees, the, the Brewers were losing to the Washington Nationals. But the Reds have really beaten up the Brewers this year. Well, that's no longer the case. And it's three games in the standings. Reds will be five and a half games out of first. By no means an insurmountable lead with all the games left to be played still this season. Not even close. in line for the win, leak in line for the defeat. As it's one and two on Schumacher. The only Reds run came in the fifth inning. They had a single and a walk. The Schumacher and Santiago, a bunt by a leak and a sack fly by Billy Hamilton. Played at Schumacher for the Reds' only run. So one and two on the Reds' second baseman. Two strikes. And this will do it. The Brewers have swept the Reds in a three-game series. Final count here today of five to one.
Mets have five base hits in the game. We'll have more to come from Milwaukee in a moment.